Okay, back again, lesson 1.4. Today we're talking about measuring and classifying angles. So we just need to define a couple things. So we're going to start off with what is an angle, and then we're going to talk about the different parts of an angle. So an angle, as I draw it here, is made up of two rays that begin at the same point. Two rays that begin at the same point. So here's our beginning point for both of the rays. One ray comes out here, it keeps going. Another ray comes out here. I'll go ahead and give them some letters. So you've got an A and a B and a C. Okay, first off, let's start with um, how do you name an angle? Okay, so two ways to name an angle. You can use one letter. In this case, you can just use A. All right, this is the symbol for an angle. Kind of looks like a less than sign, but it's slanted and then it flattens out. We would just say angle A. All right. Sometimes you could do it like this if you want to. Put a little curve in there. Okay, and that shows that it's definitely a, a less than uh, an angle symbol rather than a less than sign or something like that. So angle A. Now the other way you can do it is you can use three letters. And if you use three letters, this A, all right, has to be in the middle. So we could say angle B A. C. Or you can name it backwards. Angle C, A, B. And they, all of these mean the same thing. Now there are some times where you cannot use one letter to name an angle. All right, so let me show you what that might look like. All right, if it's confusing to use one letter to name an angle, then you can't do it. All right, so picture something like this. So let's say we have a W here and an X and a Y, and a Z. If I just say angle W, do you know which angle I'm talking about? Well, is angle W referring to you know, that part? Or maybe is it referring to that one over there? Or is it referring to the whole thing? Okay, since we aren't sure, you can't use angle W. If I want that little one there, angle X, W, Y. Right, if I want this kind of slightly bigger one, angle Y, W, Z. Or remember, you can say it backwards, angle Z, W, Y. If I want the really big angle, it's angle X, W, Z. Okay? So, it's always okay to use three letters. If it's not confusing, you can use one letter. Okay, now, that one letter is important. You notice how the A is in the middle here? It's in the middle over here. When we come down here, if we want to name the big angle, we say angle X, W, Z. W here, that's important. Okay, that letter, that beginning point right there is called the vertex of the angle. Vertex. Okay, that point right there, kind of the, the pointy part of the angle, it's the one point where both rays start, that's called the vertex of the angle. When you name an angle, if you're going to use one letter, you use the vertex. And if you can use three letters, the vertex has to be in the middle. Now these rays are called the sides of the angle. Okay, ray AC is one side and ray AB is the other side of the angle. All right? So a couple terms there dealing with angles. Right, now, you probably are familiar with these terms, but we talked about classifying angles. All right, so let me, let me talk about the different types of angles you might need to know about. All right, we can have an acute angle. What's an acute angle? You guys probably remember this from a previous class. An acute angle is an angle whose measurement is less than 90 degrees. An angle whose measurement is less than 90 degrees. And we have a right angle. An acute angle looks something like this. It's kind of small. Okay. A right angle, an angle whose measurement is exactly 90 degrees. It looks something like that. And usually we put a little box in here to signify right angle. Right angles come from perpendicular lines, or in this case, perpendicular rays. That the measurement is exactly 90 degrees. That's the definition. An angle whose measurement is exactly 90 degrees. We have obtuse angles. It's an angle whose measurement is more than 90 degrees. An angle whose measurement is more than 90 degrees. And then finally, we have a straight angle. A straight angle is formed by opposite rays. Remember that from a previous lesson, opposite rays. And this is exactly 180 degrees. Now, in geometry class, we don't really talk about angles that are bigger than 180 degrees. So if we see something like this, 
we don't measure that part of the angle. You can, especially if you get into pre-calculus or classes like that, but in geometry, we're always going to measure this part right here. Okay? It's shorter, it's easier to measure, it's going to be less than 180 degrees. Okay? We don't bother measuring this part outside here. All right? So just understand that we're not going to go over 180 degrees in geometry class. All right? So those are your four types of angles, acute, right, obtuse, and straight. Now we have two postulates, protractor postulate. Remember the ruler postulate? And it was kind of long in the book. And then we said, oh, but remember, it just basically is saying that you can measure the length of a segment. Well, the protractor postulate works the same way. It is kind of long in the book. I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Don't copy it all down. Okay? I'll shorten it up for you in just a little bit here. All right? It says, consider line OB and a point A on one side of line OB. The rays of the form OA, in other words, ray OA, can be matched one to one with the real numbers from 0 to 180. And then the measure of angle AOB is equal to the absolute value, remember, subtracting, we might get a positive, we might get a negative, so we use absolute value, the absolute value of the difference between the real numbers for ray OB and ray OA. Now, what in the world do they mean? Okay, basically what they're saying is, here's O, here's B, and somewhere out here on one side, if I extend this whole line, somewhere out there is point A. I'll just put it up here. And then I'm going to draw ray OA. And then we can measure it with a, a protractor. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, all right. And I know those protractor posture words are kind of in the way, but I just made it a little bit too close, I guess. But I'm going to zoom right in on that protractor so you can see it. All right, now when you use a protractor, what you want to do is you want to make sure that this point out here is lined up right here at that zero. So I don't have it quite lined up right, so I'm going to bring it down here now. There, I got it lined up well now. Okay, so this, this ray is going right out here through that final mark. This goes right here on that little kind of bullseye mark. And then what happens is I come up here. Now I've got two numbers. See how it starts at 0, 10, 20, 30 with the smaller numbers? Or it's got 180, 170, 160. I want to start with a 0. So I come all the way up here and it goes to about 120, I don't know, maybe 3 or 4. That's the degrees. It goes from 0 to 124. Now what it's saying is I could line it up different if I really wanted to. And I could line it up starting at like the 10 or the 20. I'll line it up starting at the 20. Got to make sure this is still in the bullseye. This comes out here to the 20. Now it goes out to, I don't have a very good job lining up on the 20 there. All right, it goes out to about 140 something. Remember, it doesn't mean this equals 140 now. I have to subtract 142 or 3, whatever, minus 20. Still gives me that 123 degrees that we came up with earlier. We rarely want to do that. We usually want to start on the zero. Now, I could go all the way over to here, though, and start on the other zero. I wish I'd made that ray a little bit longer, but that's going out through the zero up here. And then I can measure back over here. See how it's starting with the zero, so I'm using the outer numbers. All right, I'm still at about 123. Okay, it's the same measurement, just doesn't, it doesn't matter which way I start measuring it. Some compasses, or sorry, some protractors are a little bit different. Here, you kind of have that same bullseye, so we line up there. But here it's got a nice line to line everything up with. Okay, it's a little bit nicer. And you can see the zero's on the inside, so I'm going to use the inside number. Once again, I'm up at that 123. If I turn it this way, keep this right on that, that vertex, line my ray up right on that black line, it's pointing to the zero on the outside, so I've got to use my outside number. Once again, it's right about 123. Okay, so I'm getting the same thing every time. All the protractor postulate says is that you can measure this angle. Okay, now this angle and this angle, okay, are really the same size. I know this one looks. Sorry, can't see it there. Um, let me zoom back out a tiny bit. Okay, these angles are basically the same size. I didn't measure it to make sure exactly, but the length of the ray does not affect the size of the angle. The size of the angle is how wide open it is. All right, so if I use my hands a little bit, that angle, something like that between my hands, or that, that changes the size of the angle, all right? Not the length of the ray, all right? So you need to make sure you understand that, all right? Next, angle addition postulate. So I'm gonna go back to that previous picture I had to explain the angle addition postulate, this one right here. All right, see how there's a couple angles here that are next to each other? They share this ray right here. All right, x, w, y is one angle. 
ZWI is the other angle, so they're right next to each other, they don't overlap, there's no gap between them. What we can do is we can add the two smaller angles together to get the big angle. And that's all that the angle addition postulate says. Just like we could add two smaller segments together to get a bigger segment, we can add two smaller angles together to get a bigger angle, as long as they're right next to each other like that. So the measure of angle, and here's how we write measure. We put a little M out front. The measure of angle XWI plus the measure of angle YWZ equals the measure of angle XWZ. Okay, little angle plus other little angle equals the big angle. Now the only time we don't do something like that, let me come back to this page and show you an example where we wouldn't want to try to use the angle addition postulate. Okay, something like this. We don't want to add this angle plus this angle to get this big angle. Because remember, that big angle is over 180 degrees. So, if we run into something like that, all right, we're not going to use the angle addition postulate. Part of the angle addition postulate says that when I'm dealing with um, an, an angle, let me give me some letters here, P, Q, R, and S. Point S is not inside of angle P, Q, R. This is considered the interior P, Q, R. Right. But back over here, on the example I gave you earlier, Y is in the interior of angle X, W, Z. Okay? So that's why we're allowed to do that. But just, I want you to understand that if you try to add two small angles together and they add up to be more than 180, like this one does, then that's not really the angle addition posture. Because if I want to measure angle P, Q, R, I'm not going to measure it this long way and get like 200 or 210 degrees or something like that. I'm going to measure it this way and get like 150 degrees, something more along those lines. All right? Let's take a look at how we might apply that. So let's say that we have something that looks like this. All right, let me draw this real quick. All right, and let's say we've got something like 2x plus 10 degrees, and then we have 4x minus 3 degrees. And I tell you that this whole thing from here all the way to here is 145 degrees and we're going to find these two angle measurements. Okay, so we know from the angle addition posture we can take this angle, 2x plus 10, plus this angle, 4x minus 3, and it has to equal the whole thing, 145. So 2x plus 10 plus 4x, it's a really weird x, sorry, minus 3 equals 145. Like term 6x plus 7 equals 145. I subtract 7 from both sides, I get 6x equals 138. I divide by 6 on both sides, I get x equals 23. Now that's not the end of the problem. Remember, I wanted to find these angles, so I'm going to come back up here. 2 times 23 is 46. 46 plus 10 is 56. And I put degrees on it because an angle is always measured in degrees until you learn about something called radians. All right, we're not going to do that in geometry. 4 times 23 is 92, and 92 minus 3 is 89 degrees. What's 56 plus 89? Double check, make sure it equals 145. It does, we're good. All right. Just like we had congruent segments, we can also have congruent angles. All right. Congruent angles. So let me draw two angles. I'm not going to use the ruler, so I'm just going to do it a little bit faster. Okay. We'll call this angle A. Right? And remember, when I only have one letter, angle A, as long as it's not confusing, I can do that. Okay? And over here, let's say I have another angle, and it's angle M. Right? If these angles are congruent, that means they have the same measurement. And what we do is we put a little mark on them, just like we did on segments. But here we put a mark. If I want to put two marks, that's fine. I can put two here, and I'm just going to match it up with two there. All right? Angle A is congruent to angle M. Remember, congruent means they have the same shape and the same size. Now, remember back when we did segments, we said something equals something else and we left off the little segment symbol? For angles, it's not that we leave off the angle symbol. We don't want to say A equals M, because A, without any symbol at all, is a point. So we use the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle M. This little lowercase m in front of the symbol means measure. Right, and if we're going to use equal, we have to talk about the measure, because that's a number. 
If we're going to use the congruent sign, then we just use the angle symbol. Don't do something like this. Okay, that will get marked wrong. Don't do something like this. Okay, that will get marked wrong. Both of these are incorrect. All right. So, what have we learned? We learned what an angle was. Remember, it's two rays that start at the same vertex. They can go, they don't have to go in exactly opposite directions, they just go in some kind of different direction. We have four kinds of angles, acute, right, obtuse, and straight. A straight angle is made up of opposite rays. Um, we talked about the vertex and how to name an angle using one letter or using three letters and then using the correct symbol. We talked about when to use the equal sign with the M for measure or the congruent sign with just, <coughs> excuse me, just the angle symbol. And then we talked about the angle addition postulate, adding two small angles together in order to get a bigger angle as long as they're right next to each other. That's a term we're going to talk about a little bit later on, adjacent angles. And then we talked about basically just measuring angles with a protractor. And that is pretty much it for this lesson. So um, actually, you know what? I forgot one thing, angle bisector. My bad. Good. We'll be done with this pretty quick, though, because we already talked about a segment bisector. So this is going to be pretty easy. What's a bisector? Remember, bi meant two, segment cut. So an angle bisector is a ray, or maybe a line, that cuts an angle into two congruent angles. So if I have this angle to start with, and I take another ray, or I can do a whole line if it comes out the other side, but it doesn't have to. If I come right through here with another ray, that doesn't look very equal, I'm sorry. But we say that those two are congruent. Okay, so let me get some letters on here, P, Q, R, and S. Ray, Q, R, bisects, angle P, Q, S. All right, so Q, R is cutting this angle in half, and we can tell it's cutting in half by looking at the symbols here. They have the same symbol, one mark. All right, we could do some algebra with that. If I gave you an algebra statement here and an algebra statement here, they would have to equal each other. Bisector, remember, means to cut into two equal pieces. So that's an angle bisector. Now, it could be a line. It could come out the other side here and form a line. That's fine. It could even be a plane. Right? But it can't be a segment. Remember, an angle is made up of rays. So since this goes forever and this goes forever, the thing that does the cutting in half must also go forever. So it can't be a segment. Okay, so it's a ray or a line or a plane, but the main idea is that it cuts an angle in half. And that's where we're going to stop for lesson 1.4. Now in your book, there's a little bit of something between lesson 4 and lesson 5 dealing with compass work. We'll do that in a different video and I'll tell you um, when you need to watch it. But just for now, watch lesson 1.4.